impact of IT systems on organizations. The topics I have here are user experience, employee or customer needs, cost, implementation, replacement, integration with current systems, working practices, user support, and security. So first we're going to look at user experience and what is it? Uh, simply, does it make what I already do become easier? Does it make it better? Does it make it more efficient in some cases? Okay. So will it be easy for me to use this thing? So most mobile phones nowadays, they come in that tablet shape format, right? So most people, when they pick up a mobile phone now, they actually just know it's going to be a touch screen. They know there's going to be a power button on either side. They know that they have to use either their fingerprint to unlock it, a pin or their face. So this is very simple. The user interface, or sorry, the user experience is going to be relatively similar. It's, relat it's not intuitive. It's not something new and, and amazing that's going to make it work better or work faster for us. But because it's a familiar design and we more or less know how to use it, it's going to be fine. Even if you're an Android user, an iPhone user, you should be okay. User experience also comes down to additional features. So if someone is lacking 100% sight, is this technology going to have something like having a contrasty screen so the person can read the text? If someone is having issues with hearing, will the screen have subtitles on it? For example, YouTube videos tend to do, to do this quite a bit. So when playing your YouTube video, you can actually turn subtitles on. And even if you can't hear it, you can read what's going on on screen. So it's going to be more usable. The experience for the user is going to be increased. It will not be diminished. If the experience is diminished or if it gets worse, that's obviously a bad user experience. Some of the questions we might ask ourselves when speaking about um, user experience might go along the lines of, does it increase my performance? Does the system itself have increased performance? Does it? So for example, is the iPhone 10 better than the iPhone 9? Is it reliable? When I turn the iPhone on, does it come on every time? When I touch the fingerprint sensor, does it actually unlock? That's going to give me a good user experience, right? Is it available when I expect it to? So when I open an app on my phone, when I click on app on my phone, is it going to take a whole minute to actually open or is it going to open when I need it to open? The next one we have is employee stroke customer needs. I'm going to simply leave this as user needs. So the technology I'm using, is it what I wanted? Is it doing what I needed it to do? For example, I needed a mobile phone, which was Android, right? I love the Android operating system. I needed a mobile phone that had USB-C charging so I could turn the charger in any way. Um, it would charge really fast. I needed a mobile phone with a big battery, a very good camera. I think it's like a 64 megapixel camera. I needed a phone with a memory card slot. I needed a phone that could last me two days, hence the big battery. So these are the things that I need out of my phone. I need my phone to be my camera, my sat nav, my music player, my video player. I needed my phone to have a headphone jack. So simply user needs are the things that are specific to the individual. So when we speak about employer, employer or employee needs and customers needs, what does that employee need to do with the system? And are they able to do it? What does that customer, so I'm a customer, I bought a Motorola phone, right? I, as a customer, does this phone meet my need? Does it have a big screen? Yes. Big battery that lasts two days? Yes. USB-C charger? Yes. Memory card slot? Yes. Really good camera? Yes. So on and so forth, okay? So again, just like before, the name actually tells you what the system or the service is supposed to do. So in this case, user needs, does it meet the needs of the user? Next, we have cost. Typically, we have initial cost or startup cost, ongoing cost and people cost. Now, we know what cost is money uh, is how much you're going to spend on something, right? Initial cost or startup cost is simply what you spend to start up a business, what you spent initially, for example, buy a new laptop, phone, whatever the case is, right? Ongoing cost is something like, use, is, is, um, like using cloud. Clouds typically have an ongoing cost for companies, even for us as well. I pay £1.59 every month to Google Drive and I get 100 gigabytes of storage. That's an ongoing cost. There was no initial cost for me. I didn't have to first pay Google to sign up to their um, services. I simply paid the £1.59 and they gave me the amount of storage I wanted. Next, we have people costs. So we have to think about, again, how much we're going to pay those people. But some people need to be trained. Some people need to be skilled up to be able to do the job that you want them to do. So it's always a good idea to factor these costs in. So companies have to think about all of these cost things when they're talking money. Initial cost is how much do we have to spend to get off the ground? How much do we have to spend to get started? 
ongoing costs. Okay, so every month we're going to have to make sure that we pay Google Drive X amount of money. We pay Microsoft X amount of money to have our servers up and running, to have our storage, to have our emails. Um, we might have to, for example, pay an IT specialist as well to be in the company with us every day just in case we have any issues we can go to that person next we have implementation now implementation simply means how we do things or what we actually have to do so typically in it we have design then we have implementation and we have either testing or review so the implement part is doing the thing so the process of actually doing the thing right so in implementation for businesses they have to look at time scales and downtime Time scale simply means how long it's going to take to get this thing done, right? So if it's going to take six months, it should take six months and nothing and nothing longer. Downtime, how much downtime, how much time is our system going to not be working to implement this new feature? How much time or days or hours is the website going to be not working for us to have this new feature working? And finally, we have testing. As we know, we should test everything we do as this is how we get a good indication of whether it's working as it should be next we have replacement or integration with current systems so to replace something that's quite simple right if you have something that breaks companies they have to make sure that they have replacements and in most cases they have replacements on hand so there is no way we can have an it system where we have one computer down for the entire day and that one person is not able to work we have to have replacements ready so that when that computer breaks we can replace it now integration with current systems when we integrate into society, that simply means we blend into society. So when we integrate systems, we get other systems to work with other systems. That's a necessity. There would be It would be crazy for me to buy a brand new phone that there is no current charger on the market that could charge it, no headphones that will work with it, no nothing, right? So we have to make sure that things integrate well. So we have current systems in place. For example, most companies, they have a Windows machine, where they have USB ports. So buying a mouse, we have to make sure the mouse is a typical USB-A mouse. Now, some laptops have moved over fully to USB-C. So we have to just make sure that when purchasing systems, um, upgrading, repairing, we make sure that we use something that can be integrated into another system, a system that's already in place. Next, we have user support and staff training. So is the user support good enough so that when staff or when a customer needs help with something is it going to be good enough okay so is there going to be a cost to train staff is there going to be a cost to upskill staff the new system might need uh, people might need to be upskilled so the previous system works fine but we have a slightly new system with slightly newer functions so we might need to get people onto that one then we have it says staff culture so some staff members don't like change and will this new system be so such a drastic change that they will actually say actually i don't want to use a system where this system doesn't work and they might complain will they accept the new system essentially okay now in most cases workers don't get a choice but in some cases it makes sense for them to have input because they're the people that will run the company and if the people that will run the company the people that will do the work for the bosses let's say if they're not comfortable or uh, or as efficient or as productive with the new system then that's going to be a big issue and finally we have the skill set of the staff are they skilled enough to use what is there are they skilled enough to make it be productive for them or are they or do they need to get skilled up again essentially so it's back to the same thing so it's staff culture and staff skill set lastly we have security so is the data that we're holding for customers is it sensitive and in most cases yes it's going to be name date of birth address card details if it is sensitive, we have to make sure that whatever security measures we have in place are good enough to hold this data. If something was to happen, if something were to happen, um, and there was an investigation and they came and saw that whatever the company had in place was not good enough, the company could potentially get fined. They have to be compliant with whatever legislation that there is. So as you know, the Data Protection Act, the Computer Misuse Act, they have to make sure that, that people working within a company know these things. And if people within the company choose to go outside of the legislation, go outside of the rules of the company, that's up to them. It, in some cases, is illegal. The person can get fined. The person can go to prison. So it, it's a very tricky line to walk for a company because even though it's not them, because one of their employees did it, they might have to still pay out some compensation to someone. Okay, so that's it. For, that's it. Okay, so that's it for this section. The next one I'm going to do, I'm going to do a quick minute or two video which goes over impact versus 
implications because those two words keep coming up a lot and i've noticed myself as students get a little confused when when to use which or when each one comes up what should they write for each one